Okay, kids, it's time for another episode of the Fueled by Weird podcast, the only podcast that really ties the room together. <clears throat> I'm Chris Daly, and today I have the pleasure of chatting with the creators of the graphic novel Darla, Josh Rubin, and Bree Tippetts. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. How are you? Doing great. Josh, how are you? Very, very well. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. So, you know, I like to start things off with a little bit of an icebreaker uh, just to kind of get to know you guys a little bit better. So today's icebreaker is... If you could pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be and why? Uh, lock picking. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, just in case you get locked out, as I've locked myself out of my own house so many times. Oh, dude, um, same. I don't have to break up. Uh, I don't have to break up a, a panel window and slice my wrist trying to open the door. Um, or just flying. You know just flying like a superhero if that's something you pick up that'd be pretty rad and then maybe you can catch an, a, a uap or something there you go <laughs> forget about you um i would have to say ventriloquism because i tried learning when oh, i was nice. and i just i there were certain letters i could never figure out <laughs> that's 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 a tough one that's fair <laughs> Um, I think for me, there's so many for me, but I think I'd agree with you, Josh, with lock picking. I, I have a spare key that a hide a key I keep outside of my house, but I recently had my locks changed because we got new doorknobs and I forgot to put it back outside. So there's been some times where I've walked right out and thought, damn it. <laughs> now I have to pop the windows out and do all, all this crazy. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Easy yeah. hunt stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, so for the Field by Weird podcast, the concept is really, you know, the things that you're interested in or what or what makes you who you are and, you know, for lack of a better term, what fuels your weird. So what is it that you guys are into that that fuels your weird? What is it that you guys like to do when you're not when you're not comic booking? Yeah. Um I mean, I guess reading other comic books or watching films. I also um have picked up saxophone again, which I played as a kid because my oh nice guitar. So kind of tried oh. again. <laughs> That's awesome. Lately, it's been a lot of comic book reading. God, I I I, I want to uh, I want to say that I have some like <clears throat> extra fun kind of obscure skill, but it's so I feel like such a workaholic. Um, or I guess right now, strikeaholic. There's been a lot of striking yeah. going on. Two of the three unions that I'm in are on strike. So when I'm not like, yeah, reading my stack of comics and trying to find myself in the in, in nature, just to uh, forget about how um, how much of an upheaval we're living in right now. Uh, that's that's what I do. Although lately I've been like deep diving on UFO conspiracy stuff because of the testimony from the other day where everybody's yeah. just like so wrapped up in of course the strife of their own lives as they should be but it just seems like an, an opportune time for aliens to make themselves known and real and was like yeah cool i need health insurance anyway um, <laughs> yeah seriously i mean like you said you know right now escaping reality is kind of the best thing to do because reality kind of yeah. sucks right now to be perfectly honest yeah. so i mean whatever you could do to kind of keep your inner peace and keep your keep your happiness that's kind of a that's not a bad thing at all yeah amen and and revisiting stuff from your childhood that's something i'm super big on brie so that's awesome that you're picking it up again oh thank you yeah it's been yeah. Uh, challenging because it's like not like riding a bike again but it's fun oh for sure <laughs> yeah definitely all right well um i want to now shift into kind of what got you guys inspired to do what you're doing now so josh uh we'll start with you um, what is it that got you inspired to become a writer in the first place? To become a writer was kind of, uh, I mean, I guess to become a writer like professionally, it felt sort of by necessity because by the time I was doing it professionally, um, it was almost by force, by necessity. I was uh, I was a cast member on staff director at College Humor, <clears throat> and I was encouraged to start also writing, which is something I just didn't really do formally, which is odd because I did it vocationally, or what felt like vocationally with buddies, you know, with my sketch group. Yeah. And all the time as a kid, writing scary stories and that kind of thing. Um, so I guess what inspired me to do it to do it younger was 
wanting to replicate or regurgitate or, you know, essentially expound on things that I loved watching all the scary movies, Pet Cemetery and Nightmare on Elm Street and Stephen King's Cat's Eye, just copy, 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 like writing yeah. my own version of that, writing a Freddy story or what have you. So it was, it definitely began with film for sure. Right on. That's cool. And Brie, what was it that inspired you to become an artist? Oh, man. I mean, I guess I just, like, Josh did it since I was a kid. It was always kind of something there. Um, I went through different phases of kinds of art. Like, at one point, I wanted to do special effects kind of stuff, like practical stuff. And yeah. kind of just under someone locally, but I ended up messing up my wrist in a cheerleading thing. And so I couldn't do, like, the head oh, for the molds anymore. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I got to switch gears. And then I ended up going to school for art in college and had a professor who had worked in comics and it kind of rekindled my interest in comics. And that's kind of what led me to going in this direction with my art as well. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, life happens and you have to pivot one way or another, but you know, you're still doing art and that's cool. And yeah. Josh, that's really cool with writing where, you know, you see these stories as a kid and you want to kind of retell it in your own way or just you know work on you know trying to figure out your own voice so that's really cool that's awesome that's why um, ai sucks guys we have to learn dude, to seriously ourselves with our own human brains not just I press mean, a button and say right, i mean something like, like stephen king <laughs> i mean like nick frost or not nick frost simon Pegg said it really well you know like ai hasn't had heartbreak hasn't had life happen to them so really you yeah. can't you can't create the same thing that a human could do with with art or with writing. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I think AI is a good tool, but it's definitely not something that should be replacing a human. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Jackie just wrote Skynet should never be trusted. That's yes. True. They tried telling us in the eighties it was going to happen. We just didn't listen. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, so, you know, we'll start with you this time, Bree. Um, when you're coming up with ideas for something, we you know it's something you're drawing, something you're creating, you know, where do your ideas come from? Um, I'd like to say I'm like good at being uniformed and thinking of it, like, and, like just having it, but I feel like it takes like going outside and kind of like letting your mind wander and then you can kind of gather things or watching enough films, you can gather kind of like some creepy ideas. Um, or just like, honestly, as frustrating as it can be sometimes sitting with your sketchbook long enough and you have a couple of dud drawings, but eventually something comes out that you want to recreate. So just like working through stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, as an uh, aspiring writer myself, um, part of the process is just staring at the blank page forever. Josh, I'm sure you're familiar with this too, where you just sit at the blank page and just stare. I mean, you could spend three and a half hours staring at this and then, you know, spend a half hour, you write five sentences and then you're done. And that's something I saw a meme with Taika Watiti where he, you know, said part of the process is just staring at a blank screen and just crying and being upset and sad and frustrated. And then there, there's some art there. So that's cool. Um, Josh, what about you? Where do you get your ideas from? Yeah, it's everywhere. I mean, <clears throat> pretty much I, they come to me pretty much when I'm not, certainly when I'm not staring at the screen, like on the walk or, the shower thinking about almost anything else a lot of driving too it's like i'm driving around listening to podcasts i get super inspired listening to one of my favorite um interview shows is post-mortem with with mick garris which I, I was lucky enough to be a part of a couple of years ago um because he he talks to other writers about the process and so hearing other writers like if it's like ari aster Flan mike Fl flanagan or oz perkins um there's a lot of uh i guess there's a lot of male filmmakers writers in our community unfortunately so there's been a lot it's like a lot of caucasian male horror <laughs> creators hi josh um i mean every guest he's had listening to them unpack their writing processes is super inspiring so sometimes that will catalyze something for me um other times i just started getting back into the habit of free writing so i have a document on my computer where it can be there's no you know policing of length um and sometimes you can end up writing blah 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 but that really helps and that's opened up kind of um 
sort of fun avenues to explore, which is actually, you know, it's an Emily Goldberg or sorry, a Natalie Goldberg writing exercise, you know, free writing for several minutes or a few minutes or even 30 seconds can free something up subconsciously that that helps quite a bit. So it's um it's a combination of stuff for sure. You really do have to soak up life and not look at the screen in order to be a good writer. And I, I think, you know, all of us natural introverts, have to get better at that if that's that's the tricky thing that we didn't sign up for it's like oh, i guess i gotta go like interact with people but every time that i do and get out there and get social i never regret it because you walk away with some thing you never could have thought of or never could have written some fun nuance so yeah for sure i mean like you know with the whole covid pandemic you know working from home it's definitely not it's definitely been an introvert's dream because you don't have to deal with people but at the same at the same time it you know it's an introvert's nightmare because you're making it even more introverted so i mean it's something i've dealt with where i've you know my wife's like come on we got to get out of the house i'm like but all my stuff's here i don't really want to leave yeah. it's, it's it's great here but then you know when you go out you do you don't have that um that fear of like or the regret i guess of going out and having that interaction because like you said, you do come away with something that um, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have had before. Like I know with me, I went to a writer's group once that I almost didn't go to, but after the fact, we came up with a great story where we mixed the scrolls from Marvel with fight club and came up with mm. an incre incredible concept with scroll fat. So that was kind of mm -hmm. a fun thing that we wouldn't have had it. We've joked about it for years now. So you know, that's that right. If you tough it out, you you can end up, you know, you can slingshot back to your hole yeah. and write write down everything that you just you know experienced. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you survived. Yeah. So yeah, definitely the big takeaway is even if you're afraid to have those experiences, definitely, you know, break out of your shell once in a while because it'll, it'll you never know what'll come from that. That's awesome. All right. So the reason we're here today, we want to talk about Darla the comic that you guys created together and Darla was a trip that I, <laughs> it was, it was incredible. Like it, it messed with my mind. I didn't know where we were going. And by the end of it, it totally had me twisted and it was something I never even saw coming. So how did you come up with the idea for Darla? Well, it was originally intended to be a film, which, you know, uh, they say in the comic book community, it's a bit taboo. You know, you intended for this to be a film, but you can't get it off the ground. So you're going to like come to us or you're going to come to our community or come into this medium and, you know, wipe off the cobwebs and transcribe it. Um, so I thought of it as a <clears throat> kind of Ari Aster-esque uh, Stephen King inspired kind of tale. It's almost kind of an EC Comics sort of story, um, as was pointed out to us in a recent interview, and it just kind of blew my mind. It's like, oh shit, it is kind of like a Tales from the Crypt like story in its own way with the sort yeah, of anti hero that. that goes through the, the supernatural shit. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think it, it was inspired by. <clears throat> I guess my love of the Babadook and the dead zone and also wanting to explore kind of an irritable small town, slightly elderly character, which you don't often get to see in the context yeah. of supernatural and, and what have you. And um, when I, it was a combination of, you know, Brie having like tagged me or sending me fan art for some of my films um, and looking into Brie's work where I sort of went, Holy shit, this, sort of charmingly gruesome work that she does with her art and that was just so creative and so visionary in its own right could be great for what is otherwise considered a super twisted gallows humor-esque um, and ultimately tragic story. This could actually be yeah. a good pairing. And so um, that was how, that was how we kind of came together ultimately, but it wasn't intended to be a comic. And I, I'm, I'm, I think this is the perfect medium for this story. No, I agree. And so for those who are listening to this that have not read Darla, can you tell us a little about, tell us a little bit of what it's about? Yeah, sure. It's, um, <clears throat> it's a, it's a, it's the story of a small town, um, irritable small town woman who after a factory accident, she takes um, sort of a, compounding uh, combination of pain medication, 
consumption of fracked water um, and uh, taking on the emotional impact of her accident, which leads to fantasizing a monster inside her house that sort of encourages her, encourages her to do naughty things all while she's growing obsessed with a small town politician. So there's your dead zone. There's your Baba Duck. There's your there's your tales from the crypt. Very cool. Now, yeah. Bree, um, I've listened on the other interview that Josh did with my my uh, co-host Daniel, where he talked about how he met up with you. He found you on Instagram and really liked your art. I want to hear from your side. You know, how was it? You know, getting in touch with Josh, having Josh reach out to you. What was? I want to hear your side of the story of how it came together mm-hmm. for you. Oh man, I mean, it was a trip. Uh, I I found out about him through Shutter. I like started my Shutter subscription, and there was this movie Scare Me, and it just like blew me away. Like the same <laughs> day that I watched it originally, I had to watch it again with my husband because I was like, you have to see this right away. Uh, <laughs> so it kind of started there, and then like he said, I made some fan art of his films. I really liked what he was making. Um, and then it was just a trip when he like eventually was just like, Hey, we should collaborate. And uh, I was of course just like, yes, please. <laughs> so mm-hmm. anyway, it's just been totally surreal and really cool. And Josh is like one of the kindest people to work with. He's awesome. That's very cool. So speaking of that, you know, do you guys have anything coming up? Are you planning on any kind of new project that you're, that you're <laughs> working on? that you can talk about if you can't talk about it that's okay (laughs) um together there's been no plan yet i mean that would be be rad it'd be a dream um but there's you know it it, it's tricky what with strike stuff there's stuff is quite in the air but i i'm i can't say i'm i'm not completely obsessed with this medium now i've i've deep dived into Scott McCloud, um, Brie actually sent me a work, a book the other day about how to write comic books. It's essentially a version of like comic books for dummies. It's perfect for my brain. It's like walks you through outlining, pitching and scripting in such a clear way. And um, it, it, it was really hard to wrap my head around the process, but now I'm just like, I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of, of more books, you know, for what it's worth. And thank God people are just, you can tell there's this new ignition um, uh, for for and reinvigoration for folks loving all kinds of physical media, not just comic books, yeah. not just graphic novels, but but you know DVDs and figurines and everything else. We want our stuff, and that's probably a product of of you know the pandemic. But um, I I'm thrilled to do another book with with Bree with other artists just to kind of keep it keep it going. Nice and Bree, I might have to hit you up for that book because I. Like I said, I'm a writer myself, and that's one thing I haven't been able to kind of figure out is how to transpose from from prose writing to co- to script writing. I've heard it, the I've heard it's easy, but I've also heard it's very hard. Um, and Josh, um, yeah, I've heard when it comes to comic books, once you get started, it's hard to stop. But it's also, yeah, I've I've heard comics is a love hate relationship. You love to hate them. <laughs> It's just, it's interesting because as a screenwriter, you know, again, like going, like this process was truly creating it through the back door. Like I handed Brie my director's deck of visuals for the film and the script and sort of said, do whatever you want. <clears throat> Excuse me, like take, transcribe it. And that's cool because the story is all there and there's a lot of material, but the shitty thing is, especially when you have an artist like Brie, who's not just coloring it and illustrating the whole thing but lettering everything by hand this thing this first pass of it ends up choked with text and so the brilliant thing about our publishers and why it's so great we ultimately ended up going with mike perkins and team at invader comics was mike looked at it and goes you know this is a visual medium you got to cut out a great majority of this text it's way too many words and so now having read stacks of comics with the process in mind and understanding that, you know, part of writing comic books is essentially laying out in simplest form a story in snapshots. That has really opened up my brain. I kind of, I, I now kind of get it. <clears throat> I was approaching it so script-like 
uh, so much like a screenwriter, which is really not the way to do it. And it's actually a great writing exercise for all of us who want to be writers. It's telling your story in the most bare bones type way um, with the most emotional impact. So you're when you are when you have those captions or you have that dialogue, it's really really got to count. Which is why many of the comic books, to use a, a term that um, some recent employees at recent signings have mentioned many comics are quote unquote mid they're written not as well nearly as well as the art the art is almost always better than the writing um so when you get that you know james tinney and house at the end of the lake let's say or ice cream man impactful or dark ride level piece you go holy shit this is that culmination of great dialogue great story and impeccable art and that's the dream for sure and Brie, is this um, your first time on a comic? Have you done comics before? What was the process kind of like for you? Um, it was probably my first more professional one. I've been making my own like comics and graphic novels for a while. <clears throat> I originally wanted to go into inking, and I kept getting told no, no, no. And so I was like, I'm just going to do my own thing. Um, but yeah, it, it was my first time doing it in like a professional manner and also working with a different writer. Like, I usually write my own stuff. Not that I'm great at writing, but it's like, sure. if you want to make it, you got <laughs> to do it. Yeah, yourself. definitely. And so it's been a cool experience because Josh is such a great writer and I get to just kind of just go ham with the art, you know? And so that's been a great experience. Awesome. Yeah, definitely taking a bet on yourself has proved more successful than not. So that's cool that you you decided to go on your own, even though so many people told you not to and, and look where it's gone. You had definitely paid off for sure. Yeah. I have Josh to thank for that. Definitely. <laughs> thank you. Josh. Yes. Cool. Yes. I mean, but without, without Brie and without, you know, without her art and her vision, this, this, this thing just wouldn't have happened. It would continue to sit and collect cobwebs. I'd be crossing my fingers, hoping some visionary filmmaker would, you know, come tell this story. I'm so glad we have this, product that's evergreen now there will oh darla's always going to be there for anybody who ever wants it and apparently we're almost done with this this, this first printing is almost sold out and so there'll be another wow. iteration where we can create another cover maybe add some extras like there'll be a new sort of version of it and that's really really thrilling that's cool mm -hmm. very excited for you guys well um do you guys have any advice you'd give to up-and-coming creatives or people that you know, or wanting to be, do something creative, but haven't really been able to take the plunge yet. Bri, I want to start with you. See if you've got any advice for anybody. My advice would be, it is good. Like I know people like teach you like the 10,000 hours, like you really got to put in your time. Cause I think that's where you figure out kind of your style, what you like to do, what you don't. But I think what I wish someone would have told me is you're able to space that out. You don't have to constantly be like, overdoing it and like stressing yourself out about it you can like take your time enjoy the process do it when you feel right like I wish someone would have warned me of that so just for anybody who's hitting the pavement too hard you don't have to go that hard <laughs> that's that's good advice Josh what about you um you know they always say like read everything and write as much as you can certainly to be a good writer but I, I would just to kind of circle back thematically to our conversation just in general is getting out there and not just focusing on creating an output, um, like living your life and putting down the screen and taking the walk and interacting with people, especially people that are like-minded, that love, that love what you love, that love fantasy or drama or certain types of, you know, any type of media, um, find your contemporaries and just like build relationships with them. That's, that's exactly how I, um, how I started and how I ended up in the position that I'm in is, is meeting like-minded folks and, and, you know, not just saying let's make stuff and put stuff out there, but creating relationships with people. I, the relationship that I began many, many years ago in summer camp, like with my buddies, Sam Reich and Elaine Carroll, I'm still working with them. Um, and, uh, that following that comes out of the output that we create together, you know, the audience that watches our stuff is also the audience that discovers Darla or Wounded Fawn or, 
you know, any number of stuff that we put out. And so it's this cyclical thing that hopefully we can inspire other people. So just as important as the output is like getting out there, living your life and like making relationships with people that are like, oh shit, you do what I do. Yeah, it's definitely helpful, especially, you know, when you find people that do the same thing you do, you can create that kind of support system for on days where you're feeling like, I really don't know if I could do this. You're like, yeah, let's go do it. You can absolutely Mm -hmm. do it. That's mm-hmm. definitely creating by yourself is not nearly as fun as creating with other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is a larger conversation, but the only caveat to that is, you know, not to play therapist, but it's really important to you want to, you want to be with people and create relationships with people that you feel um, uh, invigorated by that you want to help. And you also know that they genuinely want to help you and are invigorated by you. It's gotta be a yeah. two way street. Um, sure. We can all get taken advantage of and we're like, oh man, yeah, I'll help you. And then you never get it. It's never reciprocated. It's what we all learn this lesson in our life. So when you're building those relationships and involving yourself with folks, just like any good friend, you want it to feel that good. You want to go out there and like make, make buddies that make you feel good. You want, you want to be able to yeah. look around your wedding, your birthday party and go, wow, all these people make me feel great because I make yeah. them feel great. And, but you know, vice versa. So that should be the other piece of it. Yeah, for sure. Because I mean, you know, I've, I mean, I'm sure we've all had that relationship where, you know, you've got the friend that says they're going to support you, but they don't return the same kind of level of support. Um, And that definitely makes it harder because you can't, you think you're getting better and you think you're growing, but you're really not. Um, And it's just not genuine. Or if they're just wanting to be your friend to help elevate them, but they don't return it to you. You know, yeah, it's it has to be a two-way street. It's very important. And it's and that kind of definitely ties in because you can't just have it all be business. Kind of ties in what you said where you have to make those connections and do it's not about the output, it's about doing stuff. So in order to have those genuine connections, you have to do more than just work. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, there's sure there's times for just the business relationships, but you also need to make time for the personal, like doing stuff that's that has nothing to do with work that just has to do with the stuff that feels you're weird damn right nailed it nailed it perfect all right so um josh where where can people keep up with you uh i just revamped my website check out uh, joshesmindhouse.com there's darla links up there there's fan photos there's links to all my socials and stuff but yeah josh's mind house is my website all right and brie what about you where can people keep up with you um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, um, and now on Blue Sky, which is kind of cool. And then, nice. um, but all of them, it's at Brie Tippett's Art, and just like Josh, I have links to like the Darla stuff and articles and podcasts and stuff there. Right on. We just definitely we just recently got on Blue Sky too, and it's so great there. I hope it works yeah. out. <laughs> a little bit of a breath of fresh air. So. so good. All right. So to keep up with uh, us here at Geek Network, our website is geek-network.com. You can find when this interview posts and all sorts of other amazing things that are on there all in the world of nerd. Uh, You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at GeeksAZ. I believe it's that on Blue Sky as well. I can't remember because we're still pretty new there. Um, Geek Network on Facebook. I am CD is weird on Instagram. Uh, The music for the shows by Polygon Horizon. Uh, My friend's band. It's a great, they're a great group of guys go check them out um the logos for the show are made by my friends chris chandler and mike belcher go check them out on instagram and twitter and if you like the show please leave a review and tell your friends word of mouth is our friend and remember kids to embrace the things that fuel your weird and always geek responsibly josh brie thanks so much for having for being here today thank you for having us. thank you so much thank you for all your kind words and support for darla we really appreciate it absolutely